Happy Zelda week everyone, so it's no wonder that indie developers are getting out of the way of that. So a smaller week of indie games begins with Death or Treat, a side-scrolling roguelite platformer where you play as a ghost, having to save Hello Town by searching for the missing Halloween spirit, looking kind of like have a nice death in concept and could be neat. There are way too many Vampire Survivors clones at this point in time, so it takes a special game to get my attention, where the first of two this week is Toho Gensokyo Survivors, one that, of course, uses characters from the Toho franchise with an ultra-minimalist pixel art style. Yes, the core concept is the same, but this introduces a grid-based inventory system, which is at least something different. Hey, if you made it this far, subscribe to my weekly newsletter to keep on top of all things indie games, link in the description below. Do you ever feel like you're reliving the same dream over and over? Speaking of roguelites, another title is Mid-Autumn, one that is said to be inspired by Hades, but that is an extremely high bar so I would set my expectations lower, where it instead draws upon Eastern mythology and gods, having to tap into your roots to save your hometown from gentrification, but I don't know about this to be honest, but we'll see how it goes. Yes, it's Roguelite Rampage this week, with another one of these in the deck builder variant Creeping Deck Pharaoh's Curse. If you couldn't tell, this is essentially Slay the Spire but Egyptian, where everything from the artifacts to note-based map exploration is present, so we'll see how it does in early access. Releases are a little thin this week, so let me throw in an update to Call Keeper, Paws and Claws. This adds a new sub biome to explore in the meadow, adding cattle and even hatchable animal companions, including a dog, cat, rabbit, owl, and even slime, in addition to many other new features and improvements. This game has steadily been improving in early access and has already quite the fan base, so it is one to watch, where as a heads up, there will be a price increase on the 29th of May, so get this early if you are interested. Bigger games begin with Fuga Melodies of Steel 2, the sequel to an underrated JRPG from 2021, which is much more brutal than you might think, coming to us from Japanese developer CyberConnect2, who also made the Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm games, so they are by no means a small developer. The war was fought and won. Life went on. After saving the world aboard the giant tank Terranus, the children return home to live out their lives in peace. Until one day, half their number become trapped within the Terranus as it goes on a rampage, leaving atrocity and strife in its wake. The children and their new friend Vanilla climb aboard their erstwhile foe, the Tarascus, and give chase to save their captive friends. The tragedy that awaits may lead them down a path of revenge. <laughs> Skills from the first entry have been revamped along with a host of new skills that allow for strategic gameplay and enhanced tactical combat. A second form of the Soul Cannon, the Managarm, utilizes the life force of the children to annihilate foes. After a child's life force is extinguished, 
they become incapacitated. This provides an alternative to using the soul cannon, which requires a child soul sacrifice, expanding the range of strategies. The newly introduced judgment system ensures that each choice made affects the trajectory of the story. Paul's decisions affect his growth as a leader, endowing him with different leader skills. Gauge the enemy and command your crew as the situation demands to gain the upper hand in combat. Players can now progress along battle routes in new ways using the airship system and bolster their strength and combat prowess through expeditions and notebook entries. A youth struggle and strife will give rise to the miraculous. Caught in a tangled web of mysteries. A secret from a world lost to time. We also have the Steam, but not 1.0 release of Void Train, which was previously on the Epic Games Store only, where I still don't quite know what to make of this first-person title that is more similar to a survival crafting game in concept where you're using your interdimensional train to explore new worlds, upgrading it as you go along, which sure is a unique concept worth exploring. Smaller games begin with Battle Grid Prologue, the other Vampire Survivors style game that I was talking about, where the twist is that you are commanding a squad of units at the same time with an awesome sci-fi look and theme. We also have The Wrench of Rivershine, a horse racing and wrenching simulation title where it looks well put together and is from the developer of Alchemy Story and Bunny Park, among other cozy games which makes this of interest.
We have certainly seen games like Panorama before, since it follows in the footsteps of games like Dothromantic, but this is from the developer of No Place Like Home. So, like the previous game, I'm sure that the pedigree is there. It's a relaxing city builder title where you need to place complementary tiles near each other, where you can even look at and pet the various cats living there, looking very cosy. Polish developer Pyramid Games is one of the most versatile and perhaps not so indie studios where they've made a whole bunch of very popular first person simulator titles, but their next game is Occupy Mars The Game, a first and third person survival sandbox all about surviving on Mars where it looks fairly impressive and could be subnautica level if they get things right. For centuries, the Couteau d'Or has chronicled the greatest chefs in one prestigious guide. Now, the once-in-a-decade event is returning. Do you have what it takes to earn a star? We also have the fourth and latest entry in the Cook, Surf, Delicious franchise in Cook, Surf, Forever, one where you play as an aspiring food cart chef wanting to ascend to the highest level through a culinary competition. But if the first three games are anything to go on, will be fast-paced and intense, with some of the most mouth-watering food in all of games. Chef to get three stars. I'm going to absolutely crush this. They won't know what hit them. I did preview this next title when looking at upcoming games of the month, where Mecha Bellum is a sci-fi auto-battler that looks awesome, where you choose and place different types of units in formation and then set them loose. There are upgrade and customization options for your units, as well as active abilities in battle like an airstrike, where the clash of massive armies just looks so awesome and could kick off another wave of popularity of this genre. Of course, it goes without saying that the sequel to one of the best roguelite RPGs of all time gets top billing, releasing out of early access and onto Steam, where in addition to the new character classes and enemies, there are new gameplay systems and even a stark change in game structure, making Darkest Dungeon 2 quite unlike the first game, but I'm excited to dive into the launch version, with a special mention going to patron member and indie game ultra fan Sean H, but if you want more RPGs, watch this video right here. <laughs> 